By the year 2100, over a third of Singapore could be underwater. So in 2025, the government launched a $100 billion plan to build entire artificial islands designed to hold back the ocean. But here's the twist. What if their biggest bet doesn't work? Climate models are evolving. Sea levels are rising faster than predicted. And if this project fails, Singapore could lose more than land. It could lose its economic stability, global relevance, and even its existence. Because when you're a small nation with no inland, there's nowhere to run. This isn't just about Singapore. Other coastal cities are watching, New York, Tokyo, Jakarta. Because if this model fails, it could redefine global urban survival in the age of climate collapse. Stick around till the end, because the way they're engineering these islands isn't just ambitious. It's unlike anything the world has ever attempted. Just off Singapore's east coast, a massive project is quietly taking shape. It's called Long Island, and it's not your typical stretch of land. At 800 hectares, it's twice the size of Marina Bay. But this isn't about luxury condos or another skyline. It's about survival. Singapore is building Long Island for three urgent reasons. First, to act as a defensive barrier against future five-meter storm surges, the kind that could devastate the entire East Coast. Second, to create new homes and economic zones in a country with almost no room left to expand. Third, to establish the country's 18th freshwater reservoir, solving long-term water security in the face of rising droughts and unpredictable rainfall. So why not just build seawalls like other coastal nations? Because seawalls only block water, Long Island is designed to protect and produce, blending defense, livability, and sustainability. This isn't just climate infrastructure. It's a blueprint for how entire cities might need to evolve. And for Singapore, which imports water, food, and even sand, this isn't optional. It's a last line of defense, built not just for the present, but for the next 100 years. So how exactly do you build an artificial island strong enough to stop the sea? The answer, 200 massive caissons, each the size of a 15-story building. These giant concrete boxes are built on land, then floated out to sea and lowered into place like enormous Lego bricks. Once in position, they're anchored to the seabed, filled with ballast and backfilled with stone, sand, and concrete creating a wall strong enough to hold back the ocean. Each caisson is modular and upgradable, designed to last over 150 years and ready to be reinforced or expanded as technology improves. Think of it like a future-proof foundation, built not just for today's climate, but for tomorrow's extremes. Unlike traditional land reclamation, this technique allows for faster construction, more control, and less environmental disruption. And it's not random. This method is inspired by oil rigs, floating dry docks, and naval engineering, systems already tested under harsh marine conditions. What makes Long Island unique is not just what it's made of, but how it's engineered for adaptability. Because Singapore isn't just planning for one sea level, they're planning for every possible future. What will these artificial islands actually do? They're not just sea barriers, they're designed to be fully functional extensions of Singapore, built with purpose and precision. There are three major zones. Urban living, complete with residential housing, offices, malls, and public spaces. This means more homes for Singapore's growing population without eating into existing city space. Recreation, featuring parks, cycling paths, and even man-made beaches. The popular East Coast Park will be tripled in size, offering locals more space to relax and unwind. Aviation and Logistics The islands will create space for a possible Changi Airport expansion, boosting Singapore's position as a global hub. But there's more. A new freshwater reservoir will form between the islands and the mainland, part of Singapore's long-term water security strategy. To manage sea levels and storm surges, engineers will install tidal gates and pumping systems modeled after the successful marina barrage. This isn't just about defense. It's about building a city that adapts, protects, and thrives at the same time. Singapore isn't just keeping the sea out. 
It's bringing the future in. The environmental gamble behind Long Island is massive. Over 60% of Singapore's coral reefs have already disappeared. Now, with land reclamation on this scale, marine biodiversity faces an even greater threat. Environmentalists are sounding the alarm. The reefs, mangroves, and seagrass beds that act as natural storm buffers could be lost in the process. As one activist put it, you can't fight climate change by destroying the ecosystems that protect you. There is another layer to this risk. Climate models are changing fast. What scientists once thought would happen by 2100 could now arrive much earlier. If the projections are off by even a few decades, Long Island's design could become obsolete before it's complete. And this isn't just about dollars. It's about spending $100 billion, transforming the coastline, building a defense system that takes decades to finish, only to face storm surges or sea levels that exceed the design's limits. The emotional weight is real. Imagine building for survival, only to watch nature outpace your best ideas. Singapore's biggest challenge isn't just engineering. It's beating a clock that won't stop ticking. The timeline for Long Island is ambitious and uncertain. Phase 1 runs from 2024 to 2029, focused on feasibility studies, environmental reviews, and public consultations. No land will be moved until every detail is debated. Actual construction begins in the 2030s, unfolding in phases across two decades. Final completion? Not before 2060, possibly even later. That means a project started today might not be fully realized for 35 plus years. The price tag is staggering, over $100 billion. That makes Long Island Singapore's most expensive infrastructure investment in history. Can you truly plan for the year 2100 when climate models change every five years? Sea level forecasts are constantly updated. Technology evolves. Social needs shift. Even international climate policy could reshape what this island is meant to defend against. What happens if projections are wrong? If sea levels rise faster or in unexpected patterns, decades of planning and billions of dollars might not be enough. This isn't just a project. It's a generational bet. And the cost of being wrong is the very land it's meant to save. This isn't just about land reclamation. It's a city betting against nature itself. Singapore faces a stark choice. Retreat from the sea or build into it. And it has chosen to build forward with ambition, technology, and billions of dollars. But here's the deeper question. Can human innovation truly outpace the forces of nature? What happens if sea levels rise faster than we can adapt? What if today's bold designs become tomorrow's submerged ruins? Long Island isn't just a project. It's a symbol of what cities worldwide may have to do. It reflects both human hope and the limits of control. Because in the end, no matter how futuristic the solution, nature doesn't follow blueprints. Will these artificial islands stand as proof of resilience or as monuments to our overconfidence? That's the gamble, and the ocean doesn't bluff. What Singapore is building isn't just land. It's a blueprint for the future. If it works, coastal cities around the world may follow. But if it fails, it could become a $100 billion cautionary tale. This is more than a story about seawalls and sand. It's about what happens when a country dares to fight nature with bold vision, and what's at stake if it's wrong. What do you think? Visionary brilliance or an overconfident gamble? Comment below, especially if your city is facing similar threats. And if you want more deep dives into the hidden forces shaping our world, subscribe, share, and turn on notifications, because the next big story might already be rising, just like the sea.